What's up, man? What's up? Have you ever heard of the affluenza defense? The affluenza defense? I know it sounds like the common cold, but it's not. I, yeah. That's what I'm going to read of. you a story and get your thoughts. Okay. It says, the affluenza defense. Judge rules rich kids. Rich kidness makes him not liable for deadly drunk driving accident. It says, <clears throat> for most people, conviction for, for vehicular manslaughter due to drunk driving warrants a lengthy sentence, but not in the case of Ethan Couch a wealthy young man from the state of Texas. Now, this kid, 16 years old, decides he's going to have a party at uh, at his house. His parents are super rich. His dad, somewhere in Texas, well, in Keller, Texas, um, <clears throat> owns, he's the owner of this um, steel manufacturing plant. So okay. the dude's just got more money than he knows what to do with. This kid <clears throat> basically lives in his own house. It's this huge house, um, like, I don't know, I think they said it was like four or five miles from his parents' house where they moved to. And the kid was living in this house, supposed to be cleaning it up so that the parents can sell the house. Well, instead, he decided to throw this big, huge party in this house. Sounds like a rich kid. Yeah. Him and all of his friends, they're all way too young to be drinking anyway but they all get super drunk and when they run out of beer this 16 year old boy decides to get in his big fancy pickup truck that daddy bought him and go for a drive with five of his friends two of them are in the back of this pickup truck laying down in the back of the truck okay and then it sounds bad already they're flying down this street there's a car with a flat tire off on the side of the road, and there's some people standing. There's four people standing out there talking. Kids going down the road at 80 miles an hour in this pickup truck. Truck. I said trunk. Going down the road at 80 miles an hour in this pickup truck. Goes off the road, slams into the car. The car basically moves out of his way, and he slams into and kills these four people standing there. Wow. Now. Wow. What an asshole. The affluenza defense. Okay. Basically, let me find it again. It says, Couch suffers from affluenza, according to his lawyers, a term which means that his wealthy parents pretty much let him get away with everything. The defense saved him from a 20-year sentence. State District Judge Gene Boyd bought it yeah, uh, okay, I'm sorry. State District Judge Gene Boyd bought it at his sentencing on Tuesday and gave Couch probation instead. Wow. Said he never learned wow. that sometimes you don't get your way. Gary Miller, a psychologist assigned to Couch, said in court, he had the cars and he had the money. He had freedoms that no young man would be able to handle. So... This really pisses me off. No doubt. Really pisses me off. Yeah. Imagine there's these four people out there. Well, okay, there's three people out there trying to help this lady that got a flat tire. And she stopped in front of this guy's house. The guy's inside the house. His wife and daughter go out there to help. And then somebody else passing by stops, gets out of the car, and tries to help, you know, with the flat tire. Yeah. Yeah. That's and this spoiled, rotten, little, rich son of a bitch comes flying down the road drunk at 16 years old. And fucking kills all of them. And kills all four of them. And he, he gets off because he's fucking and he a gets, spoiled, rich kid and didn't know any better. Yep. That is total fucking bullshit. And then... When that they, is the, a giant failure in the criminal justice Well, system. I found the story so I could bring it up today and talk to you about it. But Jen and I were watching 2020 last night. And they were talking did, about this on 2020? Yeah, they did a whole okay, hour-long so story. At least it's out there and people can be fucking outraged and something can happen about this. Because that is total fucking poppycock. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> that is it's, that is bullshit. It is bullshit. And... God. Oh, my fucking... 
Yeah, it's crazy. They were uh, they were saying on twenty twenty last night that um, because he was sixteen, he didn't know any better. Blah 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 blah. Um, somebody brought up the fact they said, "Well, then why don't you prosecute the parents?" Yeah, and the lawyer said, but "Well, all three of those motherfuckers." And the lawyer said, "Well, we thought about that, but the only reason we didn't is because there's no law against being bad parents, so they didn't go after the parents either." There's no law against being bad parents. No, there is a law about neglect. There are laws about fucking underage drinking. Yep. There are laws about fucking... There are plenty of laws that they... There's plenty of crimes that they committed by allowing this to happen. Mm-hmm. This so, is... Somebody... Somebody is getting paid off here. There was... There was... They're rich. Well, on 2020, during, during the whole course Yeah, I should of, watch this. Watch it. Yeah, well, watching this episode... They were saying that um, basically while the families were burying these four people, this kid was in a rehab facility for alcohol and all kinds of stuff that his lawyer pretty much suggested get him into that right away so the judge can see blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It was all bullshit. It mm -hmm. was just smoke and mirrors to make the judge whatever. The judge is a fucking idiot anyway. Uh, I believe it. But while they were burying their families... This kid was in this rehab facility that his parents paid a hundred thousand dollars for him to go to, which I'm sure is nothing. It was like a fucking vacation. It was yeah, on it some was... island somewhere. I don't remember the island, but it was on some island somewhere. And he was out playing golf. He was swimming in the pool. He was hanging out in jacuzzis. And then once a day, he'd go in and talk to a therapist. Uh, he's 16 fucking years old. He doesn't need rehab. He's not a fucking alcoholic. He's just a fucking spoiled little bitch. Right. That that killed four people. Yes. Yes. He doesn't need that. What you did is you fucking gave him a slap on the wrist and then sent him on a fucking vacation. Exactly. Gave him everything he wanted and more. Just like he's always had his whole fucking life. That is total horse shit. Yep. Total fucking horse shit. What is this kid's name? His name was... Put their names out there so anybody that knows this knows who to fucking tell to fuck off or be pissed at. Or... His name was... Where'd it go? I know the last name is Couch. Couch. Uh... Yeah, he did a lot of... A lot of sitting on couches at a fucking vacation. Ethan Couch. Ethan Couch. He even looks like a little bitch. Here's a picture. Yeah. Save that picture so I can show that little bitch. They said that before his court hearing, his lawyers made him go in and clean up. They made him cut his hair. He had longer hair before. Yeah. But they made him cut his hair and get all cleaned up for court and trying to make him look as innocent as they he, possibly could. He looks like he uh, like a spoiled little bitch. He looks the people, like, just like him. The people... Um, that all gathered around after the accident happened, said that, bef oh, and that's another thing, before he basically fled the scene. Of course he did. Before he took off, he was telling everybody, my name's Ethan Couch, just remember that name, I'll get you out of all of this. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Told everybody to remember his name, he's going to get him out of all of it. Going to get you out of, what the fuck? It was his fucking fault, and yeah. he was making it out like it was somebody else's fault, saying, I'm going to get you out of this. Just remember my name. I'm going to get you out of this. And then wow. he fled the scene. Wow. Wow. What a fucking... I don't even know what to say. What? Yeah. What do you say? It's, Which is it's, terrible for it's podcasting. It's fucking but... unbelievable. No, that's... that. I am... This kid, I mean, granted, he's 16 years old. He may... And, Okay, there are there are other tragedies like that where I do have sympathy for the person, where people do get punished for things that are in fact accidents, and you feel bad for them. But this kid, this was not an accident. Well, okay, it was an accident, but it was an avoidable accident. Yes. I'm yes. sure that the kid didn't actually plan on hitting... And it wasn't premeditated. He didn't go out and set out to it kill was, these people. It was, it was an accident. But he was a spoiled rich kid 
that was not supposed to be drinking. He wasn't even old enough to drink. Barely old enough to drive. He was 16 years old. It was irresponsibility is what it was. Right. It was complete irresponsibility on so many fucking people's behalf. Right. This kid needs some sort of punishment. To put him on probation, what the fuck is that going to do? Yeah, no. like That's not going to teach him anything. It's going to teach him how to sit his little ass at home. And- and do nothing for the next 10 years. And the judge ruled that this was appropriate. So the the judge the judge is responsible for Oh, this. and that's another thing. The judge when it came time or when the judge's term for re-election came up decided, nope, fuck it, I'm done. I ain't, I ain't even rerunning. That's because he got paid. Not, it was actually a woman, but the judge was done. And you're right. I believe the judge she got probably got paid, paid off enough to re- fucking retire. Yep. He he she prevented him. She got him off of a fucking life sentence. A yeah. life fucking sentence. In fucking prison, being raped for the rest of his fucking life. Well, it's, well, and that's the thing, too. At 16 years old, it wasn't because it wasn't premeditated. He didn't set out to hurt these people. It wouldn't have been... Um, well, he wouldn't have been charged as, a, as an adult anyway... But the kid still should have been locked up for the next, at least the next couple of years until he became an adult yeah. at 18. Yeah. But he got out of at least a two-year sentence. But even... At least a two-year. Even after that, he would have been set for fucking life. Really, it would have just been like, he would have just had to endure it for fucking two years. Mm-hmm. And then he would have been out doing it again. Well, and that's the thing. Maybe. What, what exactly would this kid have to endure? Because money puts rich people in these prisons where... It's like another fucking vacation anyway. Yeah. You know, these rich people that get locked up, they're out playing tennis, they're playing basketball, they're playing, you know, they're sitting around watching TV, they've still they've, got they've their got fucking... They've got a fucking bed in there that's yeah, like a it's real like bed. It's like they're living on some sort of fucking resort. Yeah. Exactly. But it's got a cage around it, and they don't give a fuck. No, no. It's, it's the like, same thing they would have at home, just they're, they have to be there. Right. It's bullshit. They're, they don't it's have to bullshit. deal with... It's bullshit. Yes, they don't have to deal with uh, people messing with them and shit because they're always, like, by themselves. Yep. Yep, and and they're just, they're with a bunch of other rich people that are on a prison sentence vacation. Fucking A. Total it's, bullshit. It is bullshit. Somebody needs a, Walter, he's running for city council, he's going to change all this shit. Who? My dog. That's what Jeff says. Jeff's laughing right now if he's even watching. Oh, okay. But Walter's running for city council. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so that's what I wanted to talk about. What did you want to talk about? You uh, said you had something, too. I had something I found interesting. I mean, I don't, you might find it interesting, but I, a couple people out there may find it. Anyway, there, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen The Dark Knight, the, the second Batman, Christopher Nolan Batman movie, The Dark Knight, the one with Heath Ledger as the Joker. No, no, I actually did not see that. Well, there is a scene in the movie where he explains where he got his scars on his face. And he explains it, like, I think two times, maybe even three times in the movie to somebody. And it's always a different story, so you don't know how he actually fucking got him. But, um, well, I guess I'll play it for you first. Here you go. Okay. You want to know how I got these scars? My father was a drinker and a fiend. And one night, he goes off crazier than usual. Mommy gets the kitchen knife to defend herself. He doesn't like that. Not one bit. So, me watching, he takes the knife to her, laughing while he does it. He turns to me, and he says, why so serious? He comes at me with the knife. Why so serious? He sticks the blade in my mouth. Let's put a smile on that face. And... Why so serious? Now, our operation is small, but 
There's a lot now, of potential. Now, that is uh, Heath Ledger and Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. Yeah, the second installment in the Dark Knight trilogy. Now, I saw something earlier today that I thought was interesting. And I don't know if you've ever watched Batman the Animated Series. No. Uh, I don't remember when it started. It started in the 90s, ended in like maybe the late 90s, early 2000s. I can't really remember. But um, Mark Hamill, the guy who plays Luke Skywalker, does the voice for the Joker on the show. He's the best Joker ever, in a lot of people's opinions. Like, when it comes to voicing, or just all around best Joker. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it's the shit. Mark Hamill does a lot of voices, actually. He's done, he does voices for, like, Scooby-Doo. He's done voices for all kinds of shit. But uh, he just recently came back in the spotlight because of the new Star Wars movies. Which is another thing I'm going to talk about later. Um, but uh, there was a scene here in which uh, he, w him as the Joker, was sitting talking to a bunch of different, you know, villains and whatnot. And uh, I, I'll just let you listen. To and it. one night he goes off. I gotta start it over. Want to know how I got these scars? My father was a drinker and a fiend. And one night, he goes off crazier than usual. Mommy gets the kitchen knife to defend herself. He doesn't like that. Not one bit. So, me watching, he takes the knife to her, <laughs> laughing while he does it, <clears throat> turns to me and says, Why so serious? Comes at me with the knife. Why so serious? He sticks the blade in my mouth. Let's put a smile on that face. And... Why so serious? So do you think Heath Ledger... Saw that and like, like improvised? Studied, or... studied that whole thing? Um, I believe that was you. My phone doesn't make those noises. Um, Sorry. I think that could have very well been possible. I don't know, honestly. I just saw this today, and I haven't done any research into it. But I do know that um, Heath Ledger's influences for the Joker were... Um, I can't remember his last name, but the character Alex in A Clockwork Orange by Stanley Kubrick. Um... Somebody else I can't quite remember, and my my boy Tom Waits. There was an inter there's an interview you can see on YouTube in which uh, is like one of the specific interviews he watched to like kind of get it down. So basically, Tom Waits is also a Joker if you think about <laughs> it. But um, because that was, and I'm sure he used previous Jokers as an in as influences as well, and which is that. Mark Hamill's Joker would have been a previous Joker at that point. Right. So I just thought that was really interesting. It's. I mean, it's, it's almost exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's almost identical. Yeah, I mean, other than what they're doing, it, I mean, I didn't listen that closely, but it, it's seemingly exactly the same dialogue. Right. Which is crazy, yeah. because that's... <clears throat> I mean, I don't know if Heath Ledger saw that and was like, no, let's do this, this is sweet, and Christopher Nolan's like, no, I got you, and they, like, talked to somebody and was like yeah cool let's do this or if maybe Chris Nolan just wrote that in there I don't right know. originally in the script just, I mean he's a great filmmaker he probably was, does his research and shit that was just I mean it was almost perfect it was eerie how similar it was yeah even down to the way he said serious serious you know serious I mean yeah it's pretty cool though I mean it's cool I'm not like offended or pissed or anything no I, I just think, it's, think cool. it's cool. Yeah. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Any updates on uh, Coley? Nope. No? Damn. Nope, nothing yet. Fucking name. Fucking name, man. I don't, um, I'm not even sure if he's, uh, I, I don't even know if he's gone to his doctor's appointment yet. Okay. <clears throat> oh, uh, I got a, a message on Facebook from that Ivy Doom kitty. Uh, I guess she saw the show. What? I'm just kidding. I was going to say, you got <laughs> I just wanted to see her face. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Well, if she does show up, I've got a place for her to sit. I, I saved her a seat. Oh, shit. All right, I guess I, I will. Now she probably would never want to if she sees this one. No, she would love me. She would love me. I don't think she has a boyfriend either. She really? doesn't wear a ring. Oh. Wow. So. Yeah, sorry. So the know. message was a lie to you? Yeah, the whole thing was a, fucking was a fabrication. Asshole. Yeah, she didn't fucking say Like, do you really think she watched that? What are the odds? Um, something interesting I read. There is a. I can't remember where it was at. I'm trying to find the article real quick. But uh, a toddler and his family, I guess. I'll give you more details once I find the fucking thing. There we go. Um, this article says, In a remarkable uh, in a remarkable achievement of modern medicine, surgeons have managed to reattach the head of a toddler that became separated from his neck in a severe car accident. I heard about that. I don't know any of the details, but go on. The victim was a 16-month-old Jackson Taylor who was in the car with his mother and sister when it crashed head-on with another vehicle at a staggering 110, or okay, 70 miles per hour last month. The sheer force of the impact was enough to cause his spine to detach from his head, but thankfully it didn't kill him. After, re, after reaching the op, operating theater in Brisbane, Aust okay, it's Australia, so they say everything weird, okay. The infant underwent six hours of surgery during which... Spinal surgeon Jeff Askin innovatively used wire and a piece of the boy's rib to graft his vertebrae back together. He MacGyvered him. He MacGyvered <clears throat> that little guy, man. Awesome. So, that's insane, dude. That is crazy. That is insane. He, that's the, that has to be. I mean, it might not be, but that's the first I've ever heard of a fucking decapitation and living through it. Right. Surviving decapitation. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. That was some crafty... And fast work from that fucking Dr. Askin fella. I don't mm -hmm. think that was his name. He was asking for a fucking award there. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Right. Um, yeah, I can believe that shit. Detached within his, like, muscles and skin and shit. You know, that's some force. Yeah, that's... Well, I mean, it's 16 months old. They said 16 months old? Yeah. I mean... I would imagine his neck, I mean, clearly the kid's strong enough to hold his head up at 16 months, but, I mean, 70 miles an hour. Yeah, head on at 70 miles an hour, that's risky. Like, when our parents got into a car accident, that was like 55 miles per hour, and right. they, they, they were lucky. Right. But shit. That's crazy. That's an awesome doctor. If I ever get decapitated, I hope they get me over to him fast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really poorly prepared for this episode. I don't know if yeah, you noticed. I, well, but, uh, I, I, like I said, I completely forgot it was Sunday today, which yeah. is the day we usually record. And like I said, I was, I really wanted to talk about that little asshole son of a bitch in Texas. So I was kind of blowing up your phone. Hey, you, when do you get no, no, when I gotcha. It? it makes, makes. So, funny. Did you hear about uh, Jim Carrey's ex-girlfriend committed suicide, and um, she was depressed because he broke up with her like a couple, like a week or two or however long before she did it, and uh, she did it with his. What what they're saying is his prescription medicine. Really? It had a um, a fake name on it of his, like an alias that he uses for things like that. And, uh, yeah, he's uh, going through some shit. He went to the funeral and, like, carried the casket and shit. Why would he need an he's alias to, to get oh. prescription drugs? I, mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't think for a second that he would be able to go into a doctor and them not recognize him. That's I know. He's not using... 
the alien, he probably has somebody that goes and gets it for him. He probably doesn't want somebody tampering with his medications and uh, shit. Oh, okay. I mean, he probably just doesn't want people knowing that this is Jim Carrey's fucking drugs right here. Yeah, psychotic medicine. Yeah, like, he's he, he has, like, depression and all kinds of, like, a couple, like, it was, like, high blood pressure medicine was one of them. Um, I know, like, his son. His son is, like, autistic and it was, uh, has a couple other th- issues, too. Ambien, Percocet, and... Propranolol, whatever it is. It's blood pressure slash heart medicine. Wow. But that was pretty fucked up. Pretty fucked up. I mean, no disrespect or anything, I'm just saying. Yeah, I know his son, I can't think of what his name is. Um, Well, his ex-wife... Jenny McCarthy, she's got that show on whatever channel it is, and his son's on there all the time. His son looks just like him. Yeah, I've never seen his son. Yeah, it's um, she's got a show called Donnie and Jenny. She's with Donnie Wahlberg from... Yeah, yeah, I know about that. From uh, Backstreet Boys. Is it Backstreet Boys? No, he was uh, in New Kids, New on, Kids the on the Block. Or New Kids on the Block. Yeah. And uh, they've got a show together. They're fucking funny as crap, but... Um, um, yeah, they're Jenny McCarthy and Jim Carrey's son is on it all the time because he lives with Jenny McCarthy, and he looks just like Jim Carrey, like a little tiny version of Jim Carrey. Really, yeah. I didn't know they cute, had a kid. Cute together. little, yeah, cute little kid, but um, but yeah, looks just like his dad. Hmm. 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 Imagine that. Hmm. Well, we could finish out the rest of the podcast with funny voices. Funny voices. Everyone likes funny voices. No, I think uh, I forgot about these, but I'm going to do this. Or we could just talk about Ivy Doom Kitty some more. No, thank you. Oh, that was on. quite a segment we had. Um. <laughs> I'll give her quite a segment. Oh, my Segment God. of my cock. Wow. <laughs> Going there. Just, just a segment of it, though. Just, just the tip. There. Just the tip. Um, I'm gonna do another another edition of uh, faces you know, but names you don't. Okay. Um. You ever heard the name Gary Cole? Men. No, just Cole. Gary oh. Cole. I would have said men if that was it. <laughs> uh, no. All right. Um. Gary Cole. How about uh? I'll Google it. Don't even. That's the whole point <laughs> of the fucking segment. <laughs> um. What about uh, Bruce Davison? No. Although that name does sound familiar, but I, I don't know who it is. I can't think of who it is. All right. Well, um, Gary Cole is in a lot of things you've probably seen. He was in um, that Ricky Bobby movie, Talladega Nights. Loved that movie. He was in Office Space as well, just like Stephen Root, the guy from last time. Uh, Last time he, uh, I believe he also did voices for King of the Hill. I can't, not any specific character, but um, uh, Gary Cole, right there. Oh, look familiar? Yeah, yeah. he was also on. Um, oh wait a minute, what was that? Um, yeah, he's on a bunch of stuff. Here he is in uh, Office Space. You remember that guy? Yep. Like hey, yeah. Um, I'm gonna need you to stay go after ahead work. And come in on Saturday. <laughs> and I'm also gonna need you to come in on Sunday. Yeah. If you could come in on Monday too, that would be great. Would be great. Thanks. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah. Cool guy. Face you know, name you don't. Hmm. Now, Bruce Davison, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It's uh, <laughs> another face you know, a name you don't. Um, I know him from quite a few things, but um, he was in the, the first X-Men movie. I think also the second X-Men movie. Um, honestly, damn near everything in the 90s. Probably quite a few things in the 80s as well. But um, Bruce Davison, ladies and gentlemen. No. What all was he on? He looks from a...
All right, let me let me give you some. What was he on? I recognize Apparently that's his face. A name you don't know, or a face you don't know. Well, no, I I do know his face. I can't think of what he was on. I definitely didn't know his name, but I recognize his face. But I can't think of what he was on. No, okay, all right. We'll give you some examples then. Maybe it'll refresh the memory. But uh, Bruce Davison, like I said, X Men. I'm pretty sure he was in the second one too. Yeah, X Two. Harry and the Hendersons. Um. Most recently, I guess. I've never. He's, he does voices on The Legend of Korra. That's pretty cool. Um, was that, that was the Avatar show, wasn't it? Well, it, it wasn't Avatar, but it, it's an anime type show, yeah. Yeah, Legend of Korra was. Maybe called Last Resort, which I guess was a TV series, I guess. Last Last Resort. Resort. But, um, he was in Lords of Salem, the mo one of the more recent Rob Zombie movies. Um, he's been on Don't Trust the Bitch in Apartment 23, I guess. Which is a show people probably watch. I've seen a couple episodes. He's on CSI Crime Scene Investigation for one episode. Well, I guess he's not in as much as he used to be. Oh, he's on Lost. He was on Lost? Dr. Douglas Brooks. Yeah. On Lost? Yeah, The Glades. The new Knight Rider show that was on for a little while. Trying to think of the other than Jack, who was a doctor. Well, Jack and his dad, but that wasn't his dad, was it? No, no. What other doctors were on Lost? I can't, <clears throat> dude. It's been so long since I saw Lost shit. Uh, it's on numbers. I guess he's doing a lot of TV. Hmm. But uh, yeah, he's an X Men, X Two, Runaway Jury, uh, High Crimes. Uh, he, oh, he was in the Dahmer movie with uh, Jeremy Renner, the guy who played. You know what Jeffrey Dahmer's favorite pizza is? What? Dahmer knows. Uh, <laughs> I, like, I thought you meant what type of pizza. Gotcha. Dahmer knows. Dahmer knows pizza. Anyway, yeah. I yuck, guess maybe yuck, I'll do yuck. another one since yuck, that yuck, one wasn't yuck. so. Yeah, do another productive. one. Um, that one didn't shock me like the other ones. How about. Fucking David Morse. Don't actually, know the name. People might actually know David Morse. Um, you don't know the name David Morse? Of course you don't, because it's a name you don't know. I know Zach Morse. Not Morris. Morse. Oh, yeah. Don't know, M -O -R that, name. Don't know that one either. Are you looking these motherfuckers up right now? No, I was texting. Sure you were. I was. Um... I'm looking for a keyboard, a Bluetooth keyboard for my iPad for work. Yeah. And that's she sent me a picture of one at Target. It's a hundred fucking dollars for this thing. Hmm. Do you watch the show True Detective? No. No. Well, he's on that. Oh. David, David Morris. Okay. Yeah, David Morris. Um, you see the movie Horns with Harry Potter, where he goes the horns all of a sudden. No. He's in that. World War Z. Nope. Oh, he's been on Robot Chicken. The Odd Life of Timothy Green. Hmm. No. Nope. How about Drive Angry? Nope. Wait, wait. Who, was, who else was in? Uh, Nicholas Cage. I might have saw that one. Nicholas Cage and, uh, um, what's her name? Took from, uh, The Rum Diary and Pineapple Express. I can't remember, but Nicholas Cage. I saw that movie because I heard there was a T Rex. T Rex was in it. Um, oh, he's on Medium. You know, John Adams. I did like Medium. I did see that show. Did you see the HBO miniseries, uh, John Adams? No. Okay, I think he played, uh, George Washington on there. The Hurt Locker? He was on House. He I was in House. Disturbia. The Rihanna song? No, the movie, the Shia LaBeouf. Oh, movie. Rihanna. She's so hot. Hound Dog. He was on 16 Blocks. Fucking... Okay, shit. Hearts in Atlantis? You should see all the shit my girlfriend just got for $7. $7. She's out couponing with April today. Oh, my God. Anyway. Oh, she got a Cabbage Patch Kid. David Morse. Shaboom. Oh, okay, I do know him. Yeah. And I recognize him from House. Yeah, he was on House. He was on... Disturbia. Look at all this shit. He was in a movie bucks. I love uh, called Dancer in the Dark. 
Damn, that's magic. That's that's that iPad keyboard. What is all? Say all this stuff so people know what the fuck we're talking about. But uh, or not. There's uh, well, she's getting stuff for Christmas, so I can't say some of it out loud because I think Coley actually listens to a couple of these. But there's some stuff in here she got for Coley, and then she was wanting to get one of those Cabbage Patch Kids for Kenzie for Christmas. Mm. So she got some stuff for Kenzie. There's um, a couple things in this picture for Coley that I'm sure you can see which ones they are. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then, well, this is a case for something that Coley's getting for Christmas. Oh, gotcha. And then, I'm not sure what those are, but then those are cups for the baby. So just all kinds of and shit then, for very little. Yeah, and then all these diapers, all these wipes, shampoo, conditioner, uh, what is that, razors. All I mean, just all this shit. Look, all that shit is what oh, she couponed today. So just all like stuff you're going to need from Seven dollars out of pocket. She just totaled it all up. It was seven hundred dollars worth. Wow. She paid seven bucks. That's a deal ski. Yeah. Kudos. She should do a podcast about that shit. She should do a podcast. She does she's got Facebook groups that she tells everybody how to do it. Shit. But that's what I was doing. I wasn't Googling that stuff. The Green Mile. How could I forget about the Green Mile? Oh yeah, he was one of the guards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see if I can here he is in the Green Mile. Yeah. Kinda looks like Russell Crowe with light hair and no beard. A little bit, a little bit. A little bit. Damn. Have you ever saw a movie called, um... Nope. Cool. All right. No, have you ever saw a movie called This Must Be The Place? It's on Netflix. No. But if it's on Netflix, I can watch it. It's got Sean Penn in it. Okay. Um... Old Sean Penn, new Sean Penn. Old Sean Penn. Like, this came out, I think. So, back back before he was a complete douche. That he had his point where he was actually really cool, and then he had his point where he was kind of a douche for a while, and now he's cool again. Oh, my gosh. Everybody has their douche, period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but I did. Um, yeah. But anyway, this movie, it's called the, This Must Be the Place. <laughs> he plays, uh, I think it came out in like 2013. It might have came out in 2014. Yeah, he did. You just love saying Doug's <laughs> stuff. Doug's gonna get mad. Don't get mad, Doug. No. Um. But uh, I forgot what I was saying. He's in in this movie. He plays um, like a like a like an eighties goth rocker, like a wash. Like he was super famous back in like the eighties, maybe even the early nineties. He looks like he's all done up. He's got makeup on and like his hair's all crazy. He looks like a Robert Smith from The Cure, basically. Oh, okay. And that's basically who he was back in the day. And uh, he he hasn't performed in 15 years because he sang depressing songs for depressed kids, and some of them killed themselves, and he feels bad about it. He goes to, like, their funerals and shit when they do and stuff. Wow. He hasn't played in, like, 15 years, and he finds it. He hasn't talked to his father in 30 years, and uh, his father dies. But he's, like, I guess he's Jewish. His father was Jewish, at least, and... um. Uh, him and his father, you know who Judd Hirsch is? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> him and Judd Hirsch, for people who don't, it's Steve Goldblum's fucking dad, or Jeff Goldblum's dad in, um, Independence Day, the Jewish guy. Anyway, classic Jewish guy. He's on Taxi. Anyway. He's been on a lot of stuff. He was, he played his dad's friend in the movie, and, uh, they, I guess they were looking for this Nazi war criminal because they were in, like, uh, Auschwitz and shit like his dad had the numbers tattooed on his shit but um and he pretty much like goes with Judd Hirsch and like fucking uh hunts this guy down and it's like a it's like a weird like indie comedy slash drama or whatever it, it was really good I really enjoyed it and Sean Penn was fucking great in it like he was so like soft spoken and like he was like a total emo kid like a like what you would think Robert Smith would be like you know what I mean what was it called this must be the place. I'll sh- I'll put up some pictures up explaining or showing what we're talking about. But um, I really enjoyed it. He was funny because like he had the weirdest little laugh. He was so awkward and shit. Like it was like mix. I am Sam. Yeah. Okay. Mix. I am Sam. 
his character in I Am Sam with Spicoli and make him like depressed, like an emo kid. That's what he was like, and it, it was very entertaining, <laughs> even when it wasn't supposed to be like in a funny way. But like the way he laughed and smiled and shit, it was so funny, dude. I enjoyed it. And it was like real, like dramatic and like it was a good watch i probably wouldn't watch it a hundred times but i enjoyed it and this must be the place it's on netflix check it out if you really give shit hmm. well i had a a thought while you were saying that about robert smith from the cure okay and it just piqued my curiosity i wanted to see what he might look like now because i have no idea so I'm going to Google it. Google it. And apparently he looks terrible. Robert Smith? Yeah, he hasn't aged well. Like Holy moly. When you continue to do yourself up like that, when you're not young and pretty anymore, you're just going to look old and ugly. Like Bruce Jenner. Although Bruce Jenner, as Caitlyn, and I'm not saying that he turns me on or anything. I'm just saying he makes a very pretty woman. <laughs> so you're saying he turns you on or anything? No, 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 no. Not at all. It doesn't turn me on at all. I'm not but, saying it. But, but he's, he does. But he does make a very pretty woman. He Okay, let me say this a different way. He looks better as a woman than he ever did as Bruce Jenner. I'm, he okay. looks He looks better as Caitlyn than he ever did as as Bruce Jenner. I like that every time, it, like, he's still, as a woman, you're still calling him he, because that's what he fucking is. Well, yeah, he is. He looks better than, um... Sticking feathers up your butt does not make you a chicken. <laughs> you are not your fucking khakis. In Spike Club. Oh, <laughs> I want to watch that again, though. I love that movie. Sticking feathers up your butt does not make you a chicken. I love that. That is so great. Uh, oh, what's, um... What was his, his wife's name? From the Kardashians? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I never uh, watched fucking, what? Anyway, he looks better than her. I and believe actually, that. And she's actually a woman. That bitch is hip. Yeah. I'm not hip enough to say that lingo, but I... I'll tell you what, though. My favorite... Who's your favorite Kardashian? I don't have a favorite. If I had to pick... Khloe Kardashian? Based on looks? Holy moly. Khloe Kardashian. Which one's Khloe? Khloe's the one with... I don't, I don't, what's, Chloe's, Chloe's the same, Chloe. Chloe's the same one with the really great hips and boobies. Then that's probably the one I like, because I don't like Kim and I don't like the chubby one. <laughs> Chloe was the chubby one. Chloe's the chubby one? Yeah. Like the, was, the chubby was. chubby one? Was. They just seem like so. They all seem like superficial and shitty. But she was the one. If that, I had to choose, I would. I don't know if she's the middle one or the oldest one, but not Kim, and not the. Um, I think she's ultra. fucking gorgeous. I actually, I think she looks like. Well, I think her and Jen look a lot alike. Which one's with Lamar Odom? Chloe. Chloe. Yeah. Yeah, that's not the one I like. I like the other one. That's the one I like. The you like Courtney. Courtney. Yeah, you like Courtney. I th I thought she's the most like naturally attractive. Like all the other, like she was just chubby and weird looking, and I didn't like her personality at all. And um, I get there's nothing wrong with like a, a she's lost, lady or anything. That's just she was the, ch the chubbier one out of all. She, of yeah, she was. She but, lost a bunch of weight though. She looks really good. She still got guess nice a, hips, big boobies. So nice Court, round Courtney's booty. the one I like then, because I don't know their names. I just yeah. saw them. Courtney, Courtney's the. Is she like shitty? Is she like the shittiest one or something? Because I'm, I'm just judging this based on no, looks. I no, think she's, she's um, that's Chloe. Yeah. No, she's she fucking, looks way better now shit. than she used to. Yeah, she's hot as shit. There's a lot of people who are saying that um, O.J. Simpson was her dad because really because her mom had an affair. Um, um, her dad. Hold on. How do you know so much about these people? Because Jen watches the Kardashians, oh, okay. and therefore I watch the Kardashians, I I and now figured... I actually get to the point where I'm turning it on. All right, I because just, I guess I was just asking you if you watch it. Yeah, we watch right. it. We watch it. Um, <laughs> I may have turned it on while I'm home by myself on occasion. Oh wow! But what do you mean by turned it on? Oh, well, you know. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That was a very, very accurate sound. That was almost too good. Uh, do you practice this? Is that how you no. do it? 
You don't use lube, you just make the sound? Yeah, I just make the sound. I, I don't even that's... have to touch it. I just make the sound and it does what it's got to do. You know, mind over matter. Yeah. <laughs> right, mind over matter. Um, uh, what the fuck is that bitch's name? Uh, there's Kim, Courtney, Chloe. What's the mom's name? Cassie. Kimmy. Uh, oh, wait, no. Katie. Carly. Does it even start with a K or C? I can't remember. You know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to Google it. I've Googled everything else while I've been here. Hold on. Isn't it Caitlin? <laughs> uh, uh, I apologize for how poorly you prepared <laughs> uh, this episode is. I don't even think I introduced us or said the fucking title. Oh. I am Mark and this is Jay and this is episode number six of Jay and Mark. Correct. That was the intro. Let's get the fucking show started. I'm just kidding. That was a total homage to Jeffrey. I don't even remember where I was going with all this, so I'm just going to put my phone down. I gotcha. But the Kardashians are a bunch of fucking cuntbags, but they look good. True. Well, Chloe's not a cuntbag. Except for Caitlin. <laughs> Chloe's, Chloe's not a cuntbag. We like Chloe. We like Courtney and Chloe. <clears throat> but Kim can suck her fucking well, <laughs> I guess they all can. <laughs> no, she's busy. She's got she's got Kanye's in, in there. She's sucking Kanye's already. Uh, I know ooh. I know, right? <laughs> dick, ooh. He's dick it tastes funny. His dick tastes funny. Gay. <laughs> um. Oh, so. So, want to know what uh, I've been listening to lately? Nope. All right. Yes. No, no. No, I'm Actually, seriously. it's mostly yes. Coheed, but, like, I've been doing some throwback shit, like, listening to some stuff I haven't listened to in a while. Like, for example, I guess, um, it's my jam. Steam Power Giraffe. My jam from, like, uh, like I think it was, like, 99. No, it was 2000, actually. I don't know if you ever heard this. Yeah, man. Mm, no, that's not even that. You, you'll know it when you hear it. This. Uh. Uh. It's my girl, dog. Is that Gwen? Yeah. Okay. This is my shit, though, dude. Like, this is one of my favorite No Doubt songs ever. Called the magic's in the makeup. Why are you gonna ruin it, bro? Why are you gonna ruin it? It's <laughs> my shit, though. This is a good jam. Listen, man. They were all good jams. No doubt was awesome. Yeah, they were a really good really good band you know I heard most people she just was see walking in the spider webs so, and she was but she was sorry she wasn't home right now she's walking <laughs> in the spider webs but leave a message and she'll call you back there you go that's what I was waiting for something about a story book but leave a message when I call and call it whatever but no this is my jam I always like this one too because it was so weird she, she says like uh Something about drinking your old bath water. That's gross. But like it was hot. <laughs> like in the video too. That she so was, you're she saying you would get in the video. So you're too. saying you would have drank her bath water? I probably would. That's gross. I'd let her pee in my mouth. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did always say that if Gwen, St if I ever got to have had to, if I ever got to have sex with Gwen Stefani, I'd want her to sing. You know, her and Gavin While Rosdale are getting divorced, right? Are you kidding me? I am not kidding you. Yeah. He blew it. He blew it. And I like Gavin Rosdale. He cheated on her. He from, blew from the story it. I heard. Oh man, he Let me blew see it. if I can find that. Oh wow. Well that might be like he should get an award for blowing it there. Like, dude, you this is a you you blew it, bro. You blew it. Like he needs to be in the blowing it hall of fame. Let's see if I can find it. She just seems cool as fucking hell. And she's like almost 50 and she's still fucking gorgeous.
You watch The Voice. I've seen it once or twice. Yeah, she's she's on there. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Maybe I should start watching that one. I just, like, that dude Adam Levine just, like, pisses me off. Yeah, it says, Gwen and Gavin divorce. She believes he cheated. Hold on. Pop-up what? just came up. A bummer. I mean... It... We're told Gwen and Gavin have not gotten along for some time. As one source put it, the split was a long time coming. We're told Gwen complained about Gavin being away from home too much touring with his band Bush from December four. From December 2014 through March of 2015. So this is recent. This isn't like something that happened like Yeah, no, this ago. is going on right now. Wow, wow. One source, news. one source says Gwen put pressure on him to stop touring and stay home for his part. He felt... Oh, he felt she was being hypocritical because she was on the road too. Other sources say Gavin is a very good father, so both sides are seeking a joint custody arrangement. But yeah, she believes he was cheating also. Wow. So they're getting divorced. He blew it. So he your girl's it. about to be available. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, people are sometimes hard to live with. I'm sure she wasn't perfect and shit. Neither was he, but like, man, I would make that shit work. <laughs> In more ways than one. <laughs> yeah, they were a good looking couple too. They were both, Bush, they were both good looking. Bush people. was a good band though. Yeah. I mean, I haven't heard anything recently, but all the way up until... I don't think they have recent stuff. I think they're still touring doing their old stuff, like their razor blade suitcase stuff. The last album of theirs I bought or heard was, um, it was like, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but it was a very chill album, but it had the song like Letting the Cable Sleep and uh, 40 Miles from the Sun. That was a cool song. And, I did uh, like that one. The, I think it was the Four things we do to the, the people sun. that we love. Like that was a good tune. I like Bush. Let's listen to a little bit of Bush okay. for people who don't know who the fuck they are. But um, that's my shit. I'm her kind of man. You hear that? Mm-hmm. I did hear that. But watch. I'm gonna type in Bush and see what crazy shit. Comes <laughs> Turn the filter on. It's like Donald Trump and Jeb Bush. That's weird. People know this song. This is a very well-known song. I hear this on the radio. Like, Not this. This is some horse shit. That's no, stupid. That song is stupid. Turn it off. Well, these guys... Turn it off! Jesus. <laughs> these guys just got some free advertising, I guess. To, to the five subscribers. I know. <laughs> and growing. But here's uh, Bush's Glycerine. For people who don't know who the fuck Bush are. This is a pretty good song. It's just a little overplayed. It was. You don't get to hear it anymore. No, I still... Like, whenever they turn Rock 107 on at work, I hear this quite a bit. I love this song. This is a good song, though. kinds of 90s bands pop up on here now that I'm like, oh shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> but no, I'm seeing all kinds of bands. Like, you remember these guys? I hear this on Rock 107 pretty often, too. Oh, I love Candlebox. <laughs> yeah, Candlebox, dude. They had some good jams. This was one of the first songs that I learned how to play on guitar. Really? Yep. I this love is a this good song. song. I did not mean to treat you bad, yeah. I remember uh, the first time I heard him was from you. And like the first time. But I did it anyway. The first time. This was back when you didn't see what these motherfuckers look like until you tried to. Right. And um. You're just gonna sing the whole damn thing? I am. Thing, but, uh, you got me pumped up. <laughs> but um. The first time I saw him was you had Woodstock 94 VHS tapes and I watched it. And they were one of the bands that played. Oh. That was the one where Green Day threw mud all over it. But yeah. did, didn't you go to that? No. You were no, supposed to? That. No, I didn't go to that. I remember somebody, because Dad said he thought he saw you on TV, because he saw your big green. You remember Brink Green puffy coat? It was like, I think it was green. It was like a big ass coat you used to wear. 
in the winter time and shit. I don't know, but he said he spotted you in it. I remember that. No. I thought you had tickets or was going to go or something. Uh, no, I didn't get you all fucked up, man. <laughs> I must have been on drugs or something. Yeah, it must have been good time, Maybe man. I, maybe, uh, I might have went. You can't even I remember that shit. I don't even remember. But no, that's the first time I saw him was on those VHS tapes you got. Maybe that's why I thought you went there, because you had VHS tapes. Maybe. I don't know. Obviously, why would you have VHS tapes if you were there? What the fuck is wrong with me? Maybe to look for myself. I don't know. But no, dude, there's a... Uh, 90s bands were good, dude. Couldn't share the pain and watch you suffer. <laughs> something about falling to the ground. So, that's what I would do. I would say something, something, and then say what I know. <laughs> uh... Oh, shit, that's funny. Shit, no, but I, I enjoy it. Like, not all 90s bands were good, but, like, like right now I'm seeing Limp Bizkit, and I'm like, fuck that shit. Power Man 5000 wasn't bad. Wow, you remember Lit? Yep. Order 66 did a couple Lit songs. Oh, yeah? Fucking A. Fucking whole fuck Courtney Love. But no, no. I don't know, and of course we all know these fellas. Live. You know how fucking hard it is You're to find these my guys? Shit right now. Like try to type live into fucking YouTube and see what comes up. Right. You fucking almost everything. Yeah, you almost have to go by uh, You have to say live you have to type in live band. Or or you could you just type or in live their the song. band. Yeah, that. But the god damn. It's really fucking hard to find live. Yep. But live for motherfuckers who don't know who they are. Again, I apologize for how poorly put together this episode. No, this will probably end up being our best. <laughs> Everybody's going to be like, oh, I remember that song. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. If this gets the most views, fuck it. I'm just going to do it like this from now on. <laughs> Hope we don't get in trouble for like copyright infringement. I don't think I will. Here, remember this one? Um. I loved this song. This was my one of my fucking favorite songs. Really loud. Who is this? Um, Faith No More. Ugly Kid Joe. Ugly Kid Joe. No, I remember Ugly Kid Joe. Well, I don't really care about your sister. Fuck the little bitch, cause I already kissed her. Huh? I forgot all about Ugly Kid Joe. No, I remember that song for sure. Let's not do it like that anymore, though. That was loud as yeah, that shit. Was loud as shit. I don't know why you put it that close to the mic. I didn't expect it to be that loud. I don't know why you didn't take it from the mic. <laughs> like, pull it away a couple inches. Shit. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Fucking A. What else you got from the 90s? Uh, Pearl Jam. Uh, Pearl Jam. Do some Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam's my shit. I'll play yeah. some of my favorite P Jam songs. Fuck it. Can't like, find the Butterman. <laughs> at least it's something. Can't find the Butterman. You know that's David Letterman's favorite Pearl Jam song. That was, uh, Eddie Vedder played that on uh, the last show he appeared on for David Letterman. Oh yeah. Yep. Everybody uh, probably hears this song on the radio because this is one of their more popular songs. Actually, this is not it. Um. Which one is it? It's called Black. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. And I'm going to play the unplugged version because that is my favorite version of it. Yeah. Because Eddie really fucking yeah. wails.
I'm going to skip to my favorite part. The <laughs> The man, the myth, the legend, Eddie Vedder. You ever heard his his uh, ukulele shit? Yeah. Yeah, that shit's real good. I burned that for mom. She listens to it. Con I'm pretty sure that's the only thing she has in her car. Because every time I get in it, that's what she's listening to. Either that or the radio. But uh, no, you wanna just make sure it's not too loud. Play whatever. We gotta wrap this up pretty soon though. But uh, uh what what's this? Your favorite version of uh, Pearl Jam's Black? Oh, I know what it is. I think. Is this the Aaron Lewis version? Nope. Oh, because I know he covered it and it was terrible. Hey! Oh, it's you! <laughs> Should have known. How did I not see this coming? I forgot you used to do your cover songs. You still do that? No, you got all my shit here. You got all your shit. Oh, is that what you <laughs> used for that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Not this. Not this. This was pre that stuff. Is that the Alliance House? Mm hmm. Oh, wow. That was a while ago. Doesn't sound bad though for. I mean, the video quality doesn't look that good, but the sound's pretty yeah, it was decent. done with an old Logitech webcam. Nice. Nice. Nicely done, sir. Doesn't sound too bad. But I guess I'll, I'll let you play us out, then. That was what it, what it was. Um, I guess with that said, again, you know I what? apologize for the poor quality of this episode. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to play another one of, oh. a, of a guy that you turned me on to. That's weird. Don't say it like that. Yeah, you like no, it. No, I'm just kidding. Where is it at? Say it like I you just mean it. Saw it. The starting line. It's like a 2000 fucking two. 2001. It's Damien Rice. You turned me on to this guy. And I love Is this Damien you doing Rice. Damien Rice? What do you think? You think I could do Damien Rice that like well? This doesn't sound like Damien Rice. It's not his name. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm saying. Most Damien Rice is a kid, though. Yeah, he is. You should play uh, the actual version of this song. So this is a, the first time I heard this song was in a movie. It was um a movie called Closer. It had uh, What's her face? Natalie Portman yeah. and Jude Law and... Um, Julia Roberts and Clive Davis, I believe. But no, no hero. That's not bad. You actually sound pretty good. Um, he uh, he's an Irish guy, and uh, I haven't listened to him in a while. But he, I was, he's my jam. He's real chill. But he he had some good shit. He had a song called Prague that was like more electric sounding. That was really fucking good. Maybe I'll play that too, but 
This is uh, The Blower's Daughter, which always made me laugh. The name of that song. Can take my eyes off you. Give it a little smoke in your eye. Yeah, I hate, I hate it. I know, it hurts so bad. You think after all these it, years. I haven't done do it in a long time since I started wearing contacts, but when I used to wear glasses, the smoke would get behind my glasses. Oh, it would burn like shit. Does somebody have has something to compare it to since you did it with Pearl Jam and whatnot? Again, I apologize for the poor quality of this episode. No, I feel bad. It it's my jam, though. Just like you said it would be. Life goes easy on, on Lee. Lee. Most of the time. Most. Of the Most. Time. I put Lee's name in damn near everything. Time. You can put Doug's name in damn near everything too. Like what about Doug? <laughs> or uh. What so Doug got to do with it? Got to do. Yeah. Shorter All kinds of shit. Is this Doug <laughs> that I'm feeling? No <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Man, I hope Doug sees that. No hero in her Can't take my eyes off of you. I think you started that one a little early, but yeah, I know. Shh. You think they can hear us? I can't take I my eyes so. off of you. Just, just whisper. Uh, I'm gonna play Prague for you though, cause that song's my shit. It's a very depressing song. It's about a chick who goes like somewhere with this guy, with him, I guess, and um, like to a probably Prague, yeah. Because you'll hear it in the song, but uh, she ends up fucking, like, leaving him for somebody there. Like, the whole time he was, like, waiting for her there, and she she's pretty much used him to get there. It's fucked up. Hmm. Yeah. At least that's what I get from it. But, no, I, I, this song's my shit. Like I said, it's... it's It has uh, like more electric, like instruments and shit in it too. Probably cover this one, shit. I love acoustic. Pack my suit in a bag I'm all dressed up for pride I'm all dressed up with you I'm all dressed up for him too Prepare myself for a war Before I even open up my door Before I even look out I'm pissing all of my bullets about Yeah, it's uh, like he didn't get into it too much, but like in the next verse, he gets into it more about the story that he's trying to really tell with the, with the song, I guess. Like I said, this is what I get from it, is what I said. Other than that, it's still a really good song. Yeah. I think he plays a lot more electric style music now, too. You know what I like so much about him, though? 
You can you, feel it in his voice. You, you can, <laughs> and it's like, and I used to do this a lot too. But I'd play like certain music, and I just turn every light in the room off, or and just sit back in my chair and just listen. Yeah, it's almost like and he's in his own little world, like not even paying attention to the shit around. And him. if you if you turn everything all off around you and just listen, you can too. close your eyes and almost put yourself in that position and just imagine Pair everything that you're singing about. I love doing that. Yeah, so I just realized that the whole part I talked about, we talked over. <laughs> so Sorry, let it go, I'll shut up. I think I'm going to wrap it up after that. Uh, let Damien Rice play us out. wrapped up in Brag. Brag. More wrapped up in you. All wrapped up in him, too. That's just gross. Prepare myself for a war. And I don't know what I'm doing this for. Trying to let it all go. How can I when you still don't know? If it goes on into it more as the song goes on. But uh, I guess if any, if you really give, if you really care, I say this a lot. I guess I should just make it a segment called "If You Really Give a Shit." <laughs> but if you really give a shit, look it up. It's a song called Prague. P R A G U E by Damien Rice. Um, and this has been Songs from the 90s with Mark and Jay. <laughs> yeah, this has been If You Really Give a Shit with Jay and Mark. <laughs> but uh, I guess with that said, uh, this has been episode number six. We made it six episodes, sir. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Rick Flair, baby. Must be doing something right. Dougie will appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, he will. But, uh, yeah, episode six, Jay and Mark, that was it. Again, wasn't the best episode, probably, but we'll do better next time, I promise. No, I, maybe think, I'll, I think it'll be our best. Maybe I'll, it might be, shit. But just in case, I'll throw in something extra special for next episode. Money? I don't have that. I hope uh -oh. I, like, look at this. <laughs> I, I just thought we were giving away prizes or something. Yeah, I, I mean, I think if I had some money to give away, I'd probably would have invested some into a little production value around here. I mean, I do my best here. Don't All get right. me wrong. Well, here I mean, we'll we'll do our own little sweepstakes. Okay, on uh, for this episode, for every anybody that listens all the way to the end, I will I will give five dollars to whoever gets ten more likes for us. Five dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars cash. Fine, twenty dollars, twenty dollars <laughs> for whoever gets us. But you got to get us twenty likes. Twenty likes. If we get up to twenty likes, how are we gonna know who did this? Okay, this is how they do it on Facebook. You have to get twenty likes, and then that person that likes it has to comment whoever told them with a comment th that person's name. All right. Well, I guess twenty bucks. There you go. Twenty bucks to the to the person who who can get us twenty likes with to their credit. There you go. You know what I mean? Uh, you heard it from the fucking horse's mouth. I'll give you 20 it, bucks. It's going to be on YouTube. You're, it's going to it's evidence. So take this man for his money. Yeah. Take, but, uh, take my money. I don't know how many people actually get to the end. So I guess We're we'll about find, to find out. out. Yeah. That's why I said anybody that, that gets to the end that uh, listens all the way to the end and hears this. That's, that was get clever. us 20 likes, I'll give you 20 bucks. That was clever, sir. Cash money. All right, well, that's it. Until next time.